The importance of collecting bikes and, and ending up with the collection that I've got is so that they can be preserved for future generations to appreciate. These bikes are immortal now. You know, we're all going to die, but they're going to go on. Whether these go to a museum, whether they go into another person's collection, I doubt very much that they're ever going to go to the tip. The first bikes are German, which is 1816, Baron von Drace. That's the Drace M where you're paddling along the road. No pedals at all, you're just walking, it's a walking machine. You get to the period of the penny farthing, the only people who could ride them were athletic young men basically. It wasn't something for old people, it wasn't something for sedentary people, it wasn't something for women. So you ended up having to have smaller wheels with gear drive to achieve the same gearing. And in making two small wheels with your body above it, you've ended up with a triangulated frame. All the features that you've got in your car actually come from tricycle design in the 1870s and 1880s. Your differential, your Ackerman steering, your two-wheel drive, your two wheels at the back driving, it's all coming down through a line of development that was virtually done for tricycles, but it is then later reapplied 15 years later into the motor car. Humber, Triumph, Wolseley, they all came from bicycles. They were all bicycle manufacturers first, and then the, the motor car comes in and leads on from there. Anything that used to be designed was designed not only to, to have a, a form and a function, but the form didn't have to follow the function. The form could be beautiful just because you wanted it to be beautiful. You go back to all of these older parts that were made by people, made by humans, not made by a machine and not programmed into a computer, where you get all of those little, that, that touch of humanity, the curve, the, the bump, the, the recess, the ridge. They're not perfect. People used to take a pride in their job. Whereas once the 90s came about, the 1890s, bicycles were produced in such large numbers such large numbers that they had to open a whole new patent office in New York, which was the same size as the general patent office, just for bicycle patents. Pre-World War II, the doctor had a car, the police magistrate may have had a car, there was a few cars in every, every community, but the majority of most communities were either on horse and buggy, or they were walking, or they were riding a bicycle. In Australia, we had an enormous quantity of bicycles that was around at the turn of the century. We had bicycle manufacturers in virtually every small town in Australia. The blacksmith became a bicycle manufacturer or a bicycle dealer. Everyone had bicycles and everyone knew how to ride a bicycle and how to take care of a bicycle. That was your main mode of transport. Bicycles aren't going to stop, bicycles are here to stay. And the whole thing about bicycles, have fun. You know, it's one of those childhood things that, you know, you're on a bike, you're liberated from everything else. You can't do anything else when you're on a bike. You're in another world, a free world, by yourself.